all the unique characters. I do let them bang. Yeah, I say, like, yeah, I'm a legend, man. I'm building my legs. All the stories and perspectives featured weekly. I wasn't fully committed to that choke, and I kind of sunk into it, started squeezing tighter, and I kind of heard him gurgle a little bit. I was like, oh. And all the combat sports you could ask for in the best state in the U.S. Like I said, Ohio versus the world. It's gonna happen, for sure. Watch out. It'll be cool, man. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna show them why the Ohio MMA scene is, in my opinion, one of the best MMA scenes in the country. This is Forged in OH. IO. OH. IO. OH. IO. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 83 of Forged in Ohio. My name is Jake Murin and I'm the host of the podcast. It's an exciting time to be an MMA fan, especially here in the state of Ohio. There are a lot of great events coming up, including Made Men Promotions next card on July 13th. Lots of great fights happening at that event, including a pro heavyweight bout that I have an eye on. I'm thankful to be joined by one half of that fight here today. He's 1-0 as a pro fighter out of Revolution Fight and Fitness. It's the one and only Mark the Meat Train Gordon. Gordon, thanks for coming on the show, Mark, and welcome to Forged in Ohio. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. We've been following each other for a little bit now. I'm glad to get on here finally. Yeah, of course, man. I've been eyeing you for a long time, and the timing just so happened to work out now here, just two weeks under uh, away from your second pro fight. And, you know, we could start in a lot of different places, but let's start with the pro debut, actually, last February. What was it like during fight week with the emotions, I'm sure, of making that pro MMA debut? Yeah, I was I was ready to go. I uh, definitely was a little, like I was telling you before, I was a little, I'm always a little bit stressed out, like going up to a fight because my coach says it all the time, man. It doesn't happen till it's a, like till the cage is locked. So there's always like these questions, like how are weigh-ins going to go? Like how is the hotel check-in going to go? Stuff like that. So I was happy to go in there and perform, man. Were the, you know that stress before a fight was that even heightened knowing that that fight was in West Virginia, an unfamiliar location to you, being an Ohio native? Yeah, I I think it was definitely like a little bit of that, just because I was my first time fighting out of state, but not like the distance or anything like that, because all of my fights have been minimum an hour away. I fought in Akron twice. I fought in Columbus for I think four times. Or something like that so like columbus is three hours from me akron's an hour from me west virginia was like two and a quarter so i i'm used to like traveling like that it was just yeah fighting out of state i had a lot of people go from ohio but yeah so the fight did not last long it took you only 14 seconds to win your pro debut is that what you were expecting or did you even surprise yourself with how quickly you got it done i don't know i mean <laughs> Like, I just go in there expecting the worst, but I'm still praying for the best. And to be honest with you, man, I just walked across the cage and threw a couple of strikes. I got him to the ground and got a TKO. So, like, I guess I can never really be too mad about a short outcome like that. But I don't know. I'm such a competitor. Like, I feel, I don't know. I feel excited to perform against somebody like this guy coming up, you know. Yeah, I asked you about the mo the emotions that you felt before the fight, but what about after? You know, only 14 seconds. You didn't even have to break a sweat to become a 1-0 pro fighter. No, oh, like you said, bro, after that fight, I literally was... Like, the next day, I didn't even feel, like, accomplished, really. Like, I shouldn't say that because I advanced my career. I got to fight in front of my friends and family, but I just mentioned, like, I'm such a competitor. Like, after that, it just felt like... uh you know, I felt like I needed to do a little bit more. So that's why, and I've been trying to fight since May. So, you know, I've been training hard and I've been getting after it, man. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I imagine so, man. Was there, you know, a sense of validation that you felt after the pro debut? I know you had a successful amateur career going five and one in six fights, but there's nothing like turning pro and getting that first one under your belt, especially the way you were able to get it done, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess it is what it is. Like, all the preparation and all the stuff that you do leading up to a fight is very important. But, like, in my opinion, it's what happens in those 15 minutes now 
and you know you got to perform you know what i mean all the stuff that you did during camp it helps prepare you but you have to show up on that night that's what's most important that's something that i've actually been kind of like putting into my camp this time around is like like i have good days i have bad days but at the same time it's what happens in those 15 minutes that count the most so you can't hang your head too hard on what you just did wrong or what you just did good you got to just keep level you got to be even tempered man you got to go into that fight ready to go ready for the worst ready for the best that's the way it works how difficult is that for everything to come together not only the the training camp but also mentally and physically to the, those 15 minutes for everything to come together then in that moment not a week or two prior but you know right there in that fight yeah i mean I guess, to be honest with you, I just put a lot of faith in my coaches. I put a ton of faith in my training partners. Luckily, I'm one of those guys. I train at a gym, man. We've got lots of big guys in the area. Thank God. I mean, when you're a heavyweight and you're training with guys who are, you know, I train like one of my main training partners, Logan Urban is 170. You know what I mean? So I get that aspect of like the speed and the timing is like from his end, it's way quicker, right? But then from a heavyweight, it's a little bit different. But at my gym, man, I get the best of both worlds. So I think that just helps prepare me and it helps put me in a position where like, all right, I feel like I'm just doing everything well-rounded and I'm getting the most out of the training that I'm doing. And I'm just getting great looks, man. And and when it comes to fight night, you know what I mean? I, I go to fight night knowing I did everything that I could to prepare. Now it's time to have fun. You know what I mean? This is what it's for. This is supposed to be fun. Uh, obviously, it's painful. It's it's uh, it can be traumatizing. <laughs> it can be mentally stressful, and you know, people get involved emotionally a lot. Your friends and family are there watching you, so you know, you try to take it with a grain of salt. But at the end of the day, man, this is a big deal, and we're out here. We're trying to prove that we're the best. I know there are so many things to balance in mixed martial arts, but I feel like everything is heightened when it comes to being a heavyweight fighter, when it comes to chin durability, speed, pure power, you know, those things are really important in your weight class. What would you say your biggest strength is as an MMA fighter? I was thinking, I knew something like this was going to come up, man, I'm really well-rounded. You know what I mean? My journey when I started into MMA was I don't think it was anything special, you know what I mean? But it definitely was interesting. Uh, I was a wrestler growing up, like, all my childhood, from, like, when I just started fifth grade or something like that, like, wrestling. My dad was a college wrestler, so that guy was, you know, he was on me when it came to off-season training, you know what I mean? And when you're a wrestler growing up, man, you got that grit, and you know what it's like to go out there and lose. You don't, you don't blame anybody else because you can't. So that part of it kind of like built this competitive fire in me to where I felt like it was only destined for me to get into this sport. And then, man, man, like right after that, you know, you're asking me like about my skill set. So I, like I said, I wrestled growing up and then right after, what was it? 2018 or something like that, or 2019, I walked into a boxing gym in East Lake, Ohio, just out of pure curiosity I respected boxing so much. I watched UFC, obviously, growing up. Brock Lesnar fan till the day I die. But, like, just seeing boxing and the way the movement was and everything like that, I just realized there was something different about that sport, so I went to go try that out. I did that, man. Nothing, like, serious or competitive when I just started, but I started, like, learning how to throw punches properly and use my feet and dude that's a full body workout that was harder than any in my opinion i think boxing is definitely the hardest sport man like in terms of technique and conditioning and like toughness i think that's the hardest sport you know like i said learning how to throw punches learning how to move slip roll all that stuff is so important and then just right after that i, I remember like doing after like a year and a half of boxing i was like all right i'm gonna try i'm gonna try mma this is this might be it because I got the wrestling. I had a solid foundation for boxing. Like I said, never competed as a boxer, but I was hitting mitts all the time, man. I was beating up the bag. I was doing road work. You know what I mean? I was training like a fighter. I wasn't even a fighter yet. And I was like, all right, 
I was like, I'm not even a fighter yet. And I'm doing all this work. What's it going to be like when I am a fighter? And as you can see, man, I'm starting to put this all together. My gym at the Rev, we train boxing, Muay Thai kickboxing, catch wrestling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu in the gi, without the gi. You know, we got just so many different professional fighters that are MMA, boxing. We got just a ton of guys who are amateurs. If you go to Tapology, you can see how many guys we have on our roster. It's just growing and growing. And like I said, man, we get different looks. I think that this is playing a big part in my development as a pro fighter because I'm just getting well-rounded everywhere. And of course, you know, like I was saying, sorry to cut you off, but my coaches, man, my coaches, they're amazing. They do everything that they can to make sure that we're prepared, not just skill wise, but prepared mentally, prepared physically, prepared, you know, to get into a fight. That's what they know how to do. Yeah, for sure. I want to ask about the fight team here in a minute, but, you know, coming from that wrestling background and then that curiosity sparking you to going into a boxing gym, what were those first few days like boxing, learning all there is to learn about striking when you're coming from a wrestling background, you know? Yeah, dude, it was hard. I remember watching Andy Ruiz beat Anthony Joshua in 2019, man. That's what sparked my interest. I was like, I mean, no offense to Andy Ruiz, but he just looked like, he literally looked like a dude that just got up off the couch, which he kind of did, right, on short notice. But I was like, there's something about this sport that it, it almost doesn't matter what you look like. You know what I mean? It almost matters more about how you, how you use your skills to your advantage. You know what I mean? It was a game of chess, and that's what inspired me to go try it out. Those first few days, man, were ridiculous. We were doing just – I was just beating up on a bag. And just I just remember, like, my shoulders fatiguing so fast, and my hands hurt so bad from, like, squeezing the grip and, like, you know, balling your fist up to throw a punch, but then you're opening it back up when it's here. And it's just, like, it was just a ridiculous – like little workout that I did, but then it, it made me addicted. I was like, I want to get good at this now. So you're wrestling at your, you come from that wrestling background. You build a boxing base as well. Was there something that sparked you to actually get into mixed martial arts or was it just seeing your skills develop? And then you thought, Hey, I'm actually good enough to give this a try. Yeah. 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 Actually I was watching just paying attention more to MMA at, at that point. Like after a few years of boxing, like, was supposed to fight in boxing and it just never happened. And then next thing you know, I was like, all right, well, I went and graduated from college and I came back home and I was looking for, you know, something to kind of keep me busy. And I was like, you know what? I just walked into the revolution fighting fitness gym and from there it took off. But I guess to be honest with you, it was more of just like, I was watching other heavyweights in MMA compete and I figured at some point I would be able to do the same thing as they are. And if not better, yeah, talk to me about how you found Revolution Fight and Fitness and what separates that gym from other gyms in the state of Ohio. Uh, I just mentioned Logan Urban as a training partner earlier. We went to the same high school. He graduated way before I was even there. But football at my town, man, is big. You know what I mean? When you're in middle school, you look up to those guys who are seniors and juniors or whatever. They're playing football. So I knew Logan Urban for quite some time actually because he was a really good football player and now i see him in mma and he's wrecking stuff and i was like just looking him up on tapology whatever and i see he's training at revolution i'm like huh never heard of them where are they at they're 20 minutes away i'm like all right i'm gone that was it yeah and what was that like you know those first few days there and what has it done what has that gym done for you since and and built upon your game yeah, well, like I said, man, so I had boxing experience going into it. So I did the boxing class. First class was instructed by another teammate, Nikolai Gianti. And he noticed right off the bat, he came up to me. He's like, well, you've boxed before. He's like, all right, so let's tighten up a couple of things here and there. I do a Muay Thai class after that. I meet uh, the two Muay Thai coaches at our gym, uh, Aaron Juice Viverka and then Crew Russ Herbert. You know, those guys – they were so big on technique that it was actually annoying me. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, geez, man, I'm doing everything wrong. But it, like I said, it, it makes you want to get better because you want to you wanna perfect that technique. And then the next time around, they're critiquing you. They're like, okay, you're doing good, man. And just like I was chasing after those compliments just because I wanted to get better. 
And then, yeah, first two days I threw up both times. You know, Monday was a striking day. And then Tuesday was uh, MMA practice and grappling. And <laughs> during MMA, I just went to the trash can and puked everywhere, man. And it was it was hard work, you know. And that didn't discourage you. You went back and look at where you are now, right? And I kept going back. I was not, I was not going to leave that gym without having at least one MMA fight. That was my goal. You know, I just wanted to get one amateur fight in. Then I finished the first amateur fight and I just said to myself, there's no way that's going to be just one. I was like, I have to do that again. And then again, and then again, and then dude, it's just, you hear fighters say it, man, we're our own biggest critics. We want to get better. You know, this is the way that we live our lives. You know what I mean? It's just, we're in like this constant pursuit of getting better. Talking with Mark the Meat Train, Gordon here on Forge in Ohio. Let's talk about your next fight taking place on July 13th for Made Men Promotions. You've had quite the cycle of opponents for this one. You started with Matt Adams, then went to Damian Gothard, and now are fighting AJ Fry. What's that been like from your perspective, having to go through multiple opponents now? Well, we <laughs> Matt Adams, man, that was... It feels like a like a decade ago we were talking about Matt Adams because, like, we were supposed to fight July thirteenth, and we had like both signed the contract in May, and then, like, I don't ever know what happens on the other side. You know what I mean? I just like get the news like, hey, he signed the contract, or hey, he pulled out. So I hear that he wasn't able to fight, and then Gothard steps in, and then man, it was like a Saturday morning. I'm like just training. I'm just training. We're like doing a real intense day. My coach is like, yeah, come prepared Saturday. <laughs> I come prepared. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. I'm ready to fight. And then uh, I get news that same morning that Gothard pulls out. And I was like, oh, well, this sucks. I'm like, what do I do now? I got no fight. We're like four weeks away. But, man, I just kept that uh, positive attitude. My coaches were telling me, like, don't worry about it, Mark. It's either going to happen July 13th, if it doesn't happen July 13th, it'll happen the next weekend or the next weekend or the next week and just stay ready. You know what I mean? And here we are, man, just got uh, got word like, what was it, last weekend or something or or Monday? I don't even know, but got word that um, AJ Fry stepped up and uh, I looked him up on Tapology, you know, because Tapology is the best site ever. And yeah, I see he's 2-0, and oh, man. He's couldn't really find much about him, to be honest with you. But 2-0, and oh, he looks tall. He's a heavyweight, man. He's a professional fighter. So we're going to go fight, you know. Yeah, for sure. How stressful of a time is that for you when you are having opponents fall through and replacements are having to be found? And, you know, you want to fight on July 13th. You're training to fight on July 13th. But things are in limbo if that's going to be the case or not. Oh, yeah, it sucks, especially like me. I was a football player growing up, man, so it was like I got to see schedule who we're facing. You know what I mean? We're facing them July 13th or we're facing them September, whatever. And then you go and you become a fighter, and it's like like I was telling you before, it doesn't happen until you're both in the cage locked. You know, I've heard stories of guys bail out at weigh-ins or they'll weigh in. You know, I was just talking about Nikolai Gianti. He had a fighter – that he was supposed to go against walk out while they were playing his song. They were playing the opponent's freaking walkout song. The dude walks out of the venue and drives away. No fight. You know what I mean? So this sport that we're in is crazy, man. It's hardly even a sport. It's more of like a, I don't even know. It's more, I, it is what it is. It's a fight. You know what I mean? So it is stressful. You got to text people, hey, don't buy a ticket yet. And they're like, oh, well, why? And you're like, because this guy pulled out. And then they're like, okay, well, what's going to happen next? You're like, I don't know. You just don't know. I'm assuming this is the case with you, but are you the type of fighter to say yes to all opponents or in this case replacements that a promotion like Made Men has to, has to offer to you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, like I said, I, I got a lot of faith in my skill set. I think I've got a pretty well-rounded skill set. I consider myself a pretty big problem for just about anybody, whether they're a striker, a grappler, jujitsu guy. For me, um, you know, when a name gets brought around, of course, we're, we'll say yes, but we got to do our research first and we got to see whether or not it's going to fit into our schedule. And we look at what other fight offers we have. So, you know, it, it depends, but 
I'm a competitor. You know what I mean? I want to fight against whoever. So you've landed on AJ Fry out of North Carolina. You mentioned having a hard time finding too much about him. And I same here, man, I'm preparing for this podcast. It's kind of hard finding a ton of information on AJ Fry. Is that difficult going into a fight when you don't know too much about your opponent? Yeah, absolutely. It does. I mean, you, I mean, the goat is John Jones, right? John Jones studies film all the time. You know what I mean? And then, I've played I've played Call of Duty with a UFC fighter and he told me that he never watches film. He's like, Yeah, I just got faith in my skill set. But me, I'm I'm a guy where I like to get I like to get a feel for what they do in there. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you can't study them too much because then you'll fall into this trap of like worrying too much about what they do. You know what I mean? This is a game of chess. You gotta use your skills to your advantage. They're gonna use their skills to their advantage. You have to exploit each other's weaknesses. That's what we're in. Can I ask what UFC fighter you were playing COD with? Yeah, man, it was a couple of years ago. Um, what was his name? He's a 155er. I actually kind of... Bro, this was, this was 2021. How, how did that even uh, come about? Uh, we were playing a game of Call of Duty, and my friend Brett kills some random dude, and it says so-and-so ufc fighter and we we go back through the freaking like logs or whatever it shows the players we invite him to a game and he joins we're like yo is this really who who it is and he's like yeah yeah and we were just like hyped up we were asking him all sorts of questions about like training and stuff man and yeah and, i mean it just happened literally at random like i dude i don't even know how long ago it was maybe it was during even the pandemic you know yeah, that's pretty surreal, man. Uh, go, we're going back to uh, AJ Fry. You know, he's two and zero, two knockouts, but hasn't competed in well over a year. Do you view that as any type of advantage that you have fought three times in the span that he's been out of competition? You know what? I, I don't know because, like I said, it really depends on who shows up that night. Those fifteen minutes matter. I fought a dude in my fourth amateur fight in Akron, actually. Um, oh man, what was his name? I forgot. I would have to go back and look, man. I'm terrible with names and stuff, but I remember I fought a dude and he literally hadn't fought in like three years, you know, and he came out and it was tough. It was a hard fight. So I think it really, like I said, man, I really believe it, it's who shows up that night. We just talked about your pro debut, which was in West Virginia, but this fight is back in Ohio in your backyard. How excited are you to compete back in your home state? Yeah, I mean, it's always good to compete in Ohio. Actually, I want to, I fought in Ohio all six times as an amateur. And then, like I said, man, West Virginia is two and a half hours away or whatever. And it still kind of felt like home. I had a lot of people go there. Uh, it's going to be nice to fight in this you know, this town that I was born in and I'm 25 minutes from it. It's going to be sweet. Cleveland is awesome, but I kind of want to someday, someday I want to get a feel for what it's going to be like when I walk in a stadium and people are chanting, you're going to die and booing me. I like that. I like the idea of that. I want that sort of chaos, but Hey, I got no complaints, man. I'm ready to fight whenever, wherever. Yeah, I, I've heard of fighters enjoying, you know, fighting in their opponent's hometown before and getting that experience as an amateur in some cases. Why does that excite you in wanting to be, you know, the, the enemy walking into an arena one day? <laughs> Probably because I'm just like a regular dude and I'm really cool, but they're all like seeing me as this dude that's going to fight their boys. So they're going to boo me and tell me I'm going to be like, like, dude, I remember one time I was fighting in uh, Cage Thunder. And somebody was just like, you're going to get your ass kicked. You know what I mean? It was just like, I heard that when they were announcing my name and I was walking back and forth. I like chuckled a little bit in my head and I was like, oh, okay. And it kind of like made me want to like go out there and prove them wrong. But yeah, I mean, at the same time though, I don't let the crowd dictate how I feel. You know, I'm going to have a lot of friends at this fight probably, but it's not going to change anything. I'm there to fight, man. That's what we're there to do. Uh, I got a coach in my corner now named Eric Posen. He was a pro fighter. And uh, so him, George Comer, and Tim Stafford are going to be in my corner. But last camp, he told me, he was like, 
hey man like it's gonna be cool you're gonna go to the hotel but don't just like lay around he's like you're there to fight and I'm, yeah actually that makes sense i am there to fight i'm there to conduct business so that's my mentality anytime i have a fight i'm there to win so there's no added pressure when you have a lot of friends and family in attendance it's business as usual yeah, it's business as usual <laughs> what can those friends and family in attendance and you know ohio mma fans in general knowing that you're fighting a north carolina native what can these fans expect to see out of you on july 13th just expect to see well-roundedness man i'm not weak in any area i mean that seriously i'm really good everywhere i'm just excited to show people you know i got my friends who have been following me since day one and they'll tell you my coach even tells me all the time he'll watch my first fight and be like dude you sucked back then <laughs> he's like look at where you're at now and i was like dude i know it's crazy it's crazy what you can do when you're actually putting your energy towards something how do you get the job done and get that hand raised in your second pro fight oh man i don't i don't make predictions i'm just there to scrap man by any means necessary can we see another inside the distance uh, winner for Mark Gordon? I don't know. You guys are going to have to buy, or buy a ticket. Fair enough. I like that answer. Once again, this is Mark the Meat Train Gordon here on Forge in Ohio. I'm sure you're not looking ahead of July 13th, but I want to talk about the heavyweight scene in Ohio for a little bit. You're ranked fourth among pro heavyweights in the state. Do you like playing matchmaker and seeing how fights will play out between you and some of these other guys? Yeah, man, we'll see what happens. I uh, I don't know if I should say this really, but I think I will. I was actually, I was offered a, uh, a short notice fight back in uh, March or April. I couldn't take it because my foot, but um, I had like some sort of like tendonitis down there. I couldn't walk for like three days or something like that, but I was offered a fight on a big show. So we'll see what happens after this one, man. I just got to win July 13th. That's my only focus. I don't mean to dodge your question, but hey, to be honest with you, man, if they need a matchmaker, I wouldn't mind doing that for a living, to be honest. Yeah, I've definitely talked to fighters and even some other heavyweights that enjoy matchmaking as well. Your your first scheduled opponent for July 13th, we talked about him, it was Matt Adams. He was the only loss on your amateur record. Is that a fight that you won in the future someday? Yeah, if it comes around, for sure, I'd like to fight him again, but you know, I see he's doing his thing. I'm pretty sure he just got Sign, I checked Tapology. If you click on the canceled bout, it says he got signed by LFA. So, hey, man, if that fight happens on LFA between me and Matt Adams at rematch, I'll respect to him. Let's get after it. But um, I guess to be honest with you, man, just I'm just trying to take what comes. I'm just trying to be active and, you know, just try to build my resume and keep scrapping. You know what I mean? Get better every single day, every single fight. I want to keep evolving. I don't want to. I don't want to hit any plateaus, you know? Yeah, I'd love to see you and Matt Adams fight in an LFA cage one day. I think that would be fireworks. But I, I've also seen Matt Adams. He's done some bare-knuckle boxing and stuff like that. Would you ever be interested in something like that? Or is that too extreme of a combat yeah. sport for you? Oh, I always tell my coaches, I'm like, how about uh, how about we go to um, Florida and fight in uh, George Masvidal's uh, bare-knuckle MMA? And they all just shake their head. They're like, you're an idiot. <laughs> but uh yeah man i guess i guess i don't know the focus right now is mma are you like sincere when you actually say that or are you just joking to uh you know bust their balls i am sincere there's this one um there's this one russian kickboxer i follow his name's uh vlad tuinov he actually fought against uh julian lane in a boxing fight and uh that's actually how i discovered him because i was keeping up with julian lane and I see he's fighting uh, boxing. So this was years ago, too, like 2022. And I was like, huh, interesting. So I, like, start following this guy from Russia. And insane striker, unreal striker, glory fighter, glory kickboxing fighter. And I see he's 2-0 in MMA. He's got a ton of boxing fights, a bajillion kickboxing fights. And he's done like four or five bare knuckle. And I was like, damn, bro, that's badass. I'm like, imagine if you said you were able to like be a champion in multiple different rule sets of fighting. I think that's so cool. But yeah, my coaches tell me stick with MMA and I'm going to listen to them because you've seen bare knuckle, man. There's nothing 
you're, you can't run in there. You know what I mean? You can't take down. You can't do nothing. That is a backyard scrap. They literally start like right here. You know what I mean? It's like that football drill, the Oklahoma, where you just start right there, except it's bare knuckle and you can't run. So true or false, Mark Gordon will compete in bare knuckle boxing before he calls it quits. Like because before I call it quit on my MMA career or like just my fighting career in general? Fighting career in general. Huh. I'll say TBD. To be t- <laughs> Fair enough, man. When you look big picture at your mixed martial arts career, what are some of your goals in MMA? I've talked to some fighters who like to write them down or others who have both big or small goals. So I'm curious what you have for your career. Yeah. Um, huh. I guess short term, just keep getting better, you know, keep helping my teammates out keep evolving, help grow the sport, help grow my gym long-term, man, put some commas in the bank. That's. (laughs) (laughs) I love that answer, man. How confident are you that you could be any way, any heavyweight fighter in Ohio on any given night, given where your skill set is now, but like you said, growing over time. I'd say I'm I'm pretty confident. I think I sincerely believe I'm a pretty bad matchup for just about anybody. Skill set, aggression, fight IQ, grit, you know, aggression, like I just mentioned. Like, I think I can really get in there and give just about anybody a good fight. Last one for you, man. July 13th, your second pro fight. Is it greedy to assume that you might get another one before the end of the year if things go right? No, it's not greedy to assume that. I would love to. I would love to get as many as many in as possible. <laughs> Sounds good, man. I'd love to see it. I'm sure all of Ohio MMA would love to see it as well. Before we wrap up, anything you want to shout out here at the back end of the show? I'll give you the floor here. Yeah, I just want to shout out George Comer. The GOAT. Bonesaw George Comer. You're a man. Eric Posen. Tim Stafford. Uh, I want to give a big thank you to Logan Urban, Alonzo Turner. Um, who else? All the big guys I've been working with. Um, Dan Rogers, Leland Jernigan, um, Tyree Johnson, Chris Wood, um, Matt. I'm not sure of his last name. He just joined our gym, but he's he's been helping me too with grappling and everything like that. And pretty much everybody at my gym, man. I got so many friends at the gym. I got all my friends and supporters coming to watch me. Thankful for my family as well. I got no sponsors. So, hey, you guys want to sponsor me, hit me up. Yeah, there you have it. Thanks again, Mark, for coming on the show. I, I know you're only a 1-0 pro fighter, but what you've done so far has been very impressive. I like to do the OHIO chant with fighters that join me on the show to get them out of here. So if you'd help me out here, OH. Oh, thanks, Mark. I appreciate the time. I'm looking forward to your fight on July 13th, and we'll talk again down the road. All right, man. We'll see you. Thanks for having me. That was Mark the Meat Train Gordon, the 1-0 professional heavyweight prize fighter. He only needed 14 seconds to win his pro MMA debut, and now he's set to make his second walk as a pro fighter in just under two weeks. Obviously, heavyweight fights are on another level, and I feel like that translates to the show when I'm joined by a heavyweight fighter. Mark's no stranger to quick finishes, and I can't wait to see what happens when he steps into the cage on July 13th. If you enjoyed this episode and are listening on your favorite podcast platform, do me a favor by downloading episode 83 and leaving the show a good rating. And if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and leave the video a like. Those two buttons help me out a ton. As always, you can find the show on social media as well, at Forged in Ohio on both Instagram and Facebook. Let me know what fight you're looking forward to most in Ohio in the month of July. Thank you all for watching or tuning in. I've been your host, Jake Murrin, and this was Forged in Ohio.